hello family how are you all doing today we are back again with another video today we are going to talk about george stanny 14 years boy 1944 why he was executed that's what we're trying to find out so let's dig into the video George Stanley was living in South Carolina in the area called Kalu with his father and mother with his five brothers and sisters. The father was working, the mother was working as a cook for, for a school and they live in a house with three bedrooms. So, one day, until these two children, Betty Jr., Mary Jones, come and destroy the life they live in. One day, George and his sister went and feed their cows was coming back age 11 and age 7 years girls met him on the met them on the way asked them where can we get maypot so George tell them so George tell them that you can go to the railway track there you can find me pot so george and his sister went home and that evening the girls didn't come home the girls didn't come home so they've been searching for them the girls are missing they are searching for them everywhere including the family of the Stani, the father and George said oh we met them and we tell them that they have to go to the railway track that's where they can find me pop but as you know the police keep that one back of their mind so they the following day they find the girls dead in the bush and immediately the police they remember the boy said he told them to go to the railway track so what happened they went straight to the family home to ask for George. Uh, meanwhile, that time the blacks live segregation. The white live different place. There was there was only one railway track in between them. So the blacks live this side. The, uh, the white live the other side. So when they they come and took the boy and go, force this boy interrogate him. 14 years boy the only the first time he saw these girls was the day he told them oh you can go to the railway track this blood testy black blood testy people they took this boy so this boy they took him to the police station, interrogate him, force him until he said he did it. 14 years boy, his father was not there, nobody was there. This is how they forced this boy to accept that he did that, 14 years boy. And the 10 juries, they were all white people. 
the judge, the lawyers, the lawyer that they give the boy was was not a good lawyer because he didn't really care about what happened to the he just didn't defend the boy he didn't defend the boy he just sit there no he didn't call for any witness and then within 90 days that's like within three months they find this boy guilty and sentenced to death his mother was not there his father was not there nobody was there to defend him and then after the job that the father was doing the company kicked him out because of killing of the two girls their life become miserable so they have to flee because the white people want to kill them it become too much mess they tell the mayor Johnson to stop this killing of this boy he, he, he didn't he didn't even mind him so for his last day they let his mother and the father came to see him and that was the last time they see this boy June 16 1944 this boy was put on the world electric chair or electric stool and because the stool was too big the boy could couldn't reach where the electric have to put on his head so the bible the boy was holding they took that bible and put on the chair so that the boy will reach that place will reach the electric he was too small and they accused him of killing two girls 14 uh, two girls 14 years boy killing 11 and 9 years oh, 7 years girl how possible assistance of Georgie Frierson, Steve McKenzie, Matt Burgess, and Ray Brown, a motion for a new trial was filed on October 25th, 2013. It was brought to light that a culprit had already been named for the case after a deathbed confession. This culprit was rumored to be a white male from a prominent family who was, by 2013, already deceased. Not only that, but to add insult to injury, the culprit was also part of the jury for George's sham trial. Actual, proper evidence was given in the court hearing in January 2014. Testimonies came from both his siblings and a non-relative witness. George's former cellmate, Wilford Hunter, had stated that George never wrote a confession, but was told by George that he had been made to confess, even though he was innocent. George's confession was rendered null and void, because of course it was. After all, this so-called evidence was an unrecorded, unsigned confession by a 14-year-old boy who was deprived of legal counsel and parental guidance. Judge Cullen Mullen, in December 2014, vacated George's conviction on the grounds that he did not receive a fair trial and his Sixth Amendment right was violated. She ruled that in line with the constitutional ban on cruel and unusual punishment, the execution of a 14-year-old boy in less than 90 days constituted cruel and unusual punishment. George's siblings were understandably overjoyed to be able to live and witness their brother's name being exonerated after 70 years. But this still comes as cold comfort for the grave injustice they suffered. As George's brother Charles puts it, He already paid for his life and nothing would, even if they uh, take it off, it will still not bring him back. And that was the fate of George Stinney. He lived a You know the funny thing is that after they executed this boy 
Later they come to find out that the one who killed the girls, and he was a white man, and he was also part of the jury that accused the boy of killing the girls. He was also part of that jury. How cruel human being can be. A 14 years boy. So when the time they bring the courts back to check all this information that was 2013 but that man was already dead because the man was someone who said it himself that he killed the girls but you know why they don't want to accuse or they don't want to put white man in trial so they just ignore the story and do like the man is crazy he's not normal you see how can people be so wicked and they call themselves Christians where is the justice where is the justice well may God bless the soul of that boy thank you for watching and I'll see you in, on another video subscribe share and like Thank you. Bye-bye.